Hey everyone, we are going to be making a leaf dish today. You could turn that either into a plate or into a bowl. We have a helper today too, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Lego, you are not helping. First, we're going to start with a block of clay that we gave you. We are going to be rolling out a slab, kind of like a pizza dough or a pie crust cookie sheet even. Uh, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we have a really good surface to work on. Uh, here I have a wood board, actually with canvas on top of it. Now this is really ideal, but around your house, if you just have a wood board or you just have an old bed sheet, that's totally fine to work on. What's really important is we don't want to work on sealed or finished surfaces. So this is really heavily shellacked and the clay is going to stick to that and it'll just absolutely drive you mad. <laughs> so because there's so much water content in clay, as you roll your um, block around, it'll release that into the table and get stuck on something that's sealed. We also recommend to pick it up as you're going. Uh, even on a porous surface like this, it will get stuck from time to time. So we'll talk about when to pick it up and rotate it. But first and foremost, we want to make our slab. You want to find a leaf. Um, there are tons of options you can choose from, and obviously the larger you make it, the more challenging it will be. I have some smaller elephant ears. This is my bigger version. And I have a smaller one too. Just, it's nice to have extras in case you get started and you realize you don't like how one is working or it feels too big or too small. Um, so definitely bring a selection of leaves with you. So as far as the leaves go, you actually want to use the bottom side where the veins are the most exposed. This is going to give you the best texture. So you want to be rolling on top of the top. I recommend making sure you get rid of the stems on most of these leaves. Um, the elephant ear definitely has it worse because it has such a thick stem. And the problem with the stem is it, it goes in deeper to the clay, which can make it thinner and a little bit weaker. So you want to make sure that your piece that you make doesn't end up cracking because the, the stem is honestly where it cracks the most. Um, if you're just choosing a normal leaf out in the world, just make sure to take the stem off. Um, that way you don't have to cut around it. It's a part that's going to fall off pretty easily. So you just want the main surface of the leaf. Now we're going to get a rolling pin. I honestly recommend you stand up for this. It's really, really helpful. It gives you kind of more strength, especially if you're working with little ones. Any rolling pin works. Um, obviously it might get stuck to it from time to time. Um, if you are working with a marble or a plastic one, even a wood one, if you're using it over and over again, and I just recommend wiping it off, drying it off, and you will be absolutely fine. So you want to rotate it as you go, and that is both to keep it from sticking and to just give you new angles to work at. So as you go, you want the clay to be about the thickness of your pinky finger, so we still have a ways to go. It can be a little bit thinner, but it is better to make this um, thicker. It'll make it sturdier and more easy to transport. to also keep moving it. Um, that way you're not just rolling in one spot, so you're getting a much more even roll. This is kind of where we're at. I still have a ways to go. It's still on the thick side, and obviously we can see our leaf is still a little bit larger. So it's important to make sure you're kind of rolling in the same shape as your leaf. If you have a round leaf, you're going to want to keep it kind of a circle, but since mine's a little bit longer, um, a rectangle is kind of the shape I'm going for. We're pretty close. Um, as you go, definitely put your leaf onto your slab to make sure that it's not too big, it's not too small. Just keep checking with the size that you're going for. And I keep rotating it almost every couple of rolls. So as you can see, this fits the clay pretty well. It's about the thickness of my pinky finger. 
All right. So we want to make sure we line up the leaf right in the center. Make sure every part of the leaf is touching clay. If you have little ones, definitely make sure you're helping them with this. So you want to press it down. And again, be very careful of your stem. If it's a really thick stem, you might want to press it down less than the rest of the leaf. So I'm just going to start from the center. And we're honestly just going to press it enough, not super hard, just to get the leaf to kind of stick to the clay. Because next we are going to use our rolling pin to finish everything off. We want to make sure it's laying flat, you don't get any creases. We're going to take our rolling pin. Again, you want to press the hardest on the outside of the leaf where all the nice delicate veins are. You don't want to press really, really hard um, down the center line. Again, you don't want to push the stem into the clay too far. And just do a couple of passes. As you can see, I'm not going quite in the center. When I get close to it, I do it nice and daintily. My leaf is peeling up a little bit, but I, I do see that I'm getting an impression in there, so I'm not going to be too worried that the whole leaf isn't stuck to the clay. Alright, so I've done all the outside. I'm going to do very nice and gentle roll just up the center. Perfect. So now that we have the leaf placed in here and rolled out, we've got all of our texture, we're going to peel the leaf off. So we want to do that before we cut into the leaf. That way you see that all of your design is there and you can kind of steer where you're cutting. We recommend starting from the tip. And go nice and slow. Usually it'll get a little stuck wherever the stem was the thickest, so I'm going to pull from other angles just to help it out. Sometimes if you pull from one direction, it'll cause it to rip. There we go. I think this turned out pretty well. So now we're going to take a knife or any sort of cutting tool. I'm just going to cut right along the edge. You can decide what type of edge you want. Um, and it depends on your leaf too. If you have a very detailed pointy edge, you can cut that in. If you want to make it nice and smooth like this elephant ear is, just do a bunch of straight lines. It's very important while you're cutting and while you are working on this leaf, now that you have the impression on, that you keep your hands kind of off of it. You don't want to obscure the texture. I know it can be really hard not to want to touch it, especially for little ones, um, but you're going to get a better impression and result if you touch it as little as possible. I'm going to take all my scrap clay and put it aside. Alright, so now is the time where you get to decide what kind of form do you want. This in its current state can be a wonderful stepping stone outside. We always recommend that you take out all these things in during the winter if they're going to be outside, but during the summer this can go in a garden and it can be absolutely gorgeous. Um, it also can be a trivet in your house. You can put it, you know, on a table or in your kitchen. Um, you can make it a plate. We do recommend if you are going to make it a plate, you want to roll your edges up a little bit and you can use newspaper. We always recommend stuffing newspaper under it to hold the edges up while you're um, while it's drying. So what's important is the newspaper and kind of turning the edges up it helps it hold food so if you do ever put anything wet or anything like that you're not gonna have sauce dripping off. So it's something as simple as just a rolled up piece of newspaper that you stick under the edges. And so you just kind of curl this the whole way around your piece until you get it to the desired look that you'd like. 
you're going to leave the newspaper in there. Like, we would absolutely recommend if you just bring it to us on the board with the newspaper in it. That way, that supports it during the journey. However, if you want to make it a bowl, you can absolutely do that. I recommend going through your cupboards and looking for, for bowls that you like. Definitely try to size them to the size of the leaf. Um, since it's a little bit larger, I brought a mixing bowl. What's really, really important though, if you're going to make a bowl form, is you have to make sure that the clay will come out of the bowl. So if you don't think you can get the leaf out of the bowl yourself, we probably can't either. And I will say, there is a large risk of you having to remake it if we can't get it out. Basically, once the clay dries, you can't do anything other than to break it if you attach it around the edges of your bowl. But don't worry, as scary and as difficult as it sounds, I'm gonna show you all the ways to make this work and hopefully we won't run into those problems. So we're gonna take newspaper um, or anything that's soft um, and absorbent. Again, you don't want, to want anything like too sticky or glossy. We've got a mixing bowl. And because all of our bowls are either going to be ceramic, metal, or plastic, they're non-absorbent. So again, the clay is um, going to only stick to it and not pop off and release when it comes time for us to take it out of the bowl, which is why we're using this kind of stuff to keep it from sticking. All right, so I just put this in here. It's a little wrinkly, but it's going to be fine because we're not pressing really, really hard. We're just using this kind of as a, an option and a way to drape our clay. I'm gonna do two, just because this side is exposed and I really don't wanna give the clay a chance to stick to anything. All right, so we're gonna pick up our leaf. You wanna do it really gently, fold it from the bottom and support it. We're just gonna very gracefully sit it on here. As you can see, it's a super, subtle curve. That is absolutely fine. I have tons of beautiful pieces like this. It's very elegant and subtle. This is a good place to start. Um, if you want a really drastic curl, you would just push down a little bit more. And kind of go and see how you feel and stop. There. So this is actually kind of a, a perfect shape. It's, it's deep, um, but it's not so deep that it's getting lost in the bowl. Um, I would recommend not curling um, these too much over it. Again, when you start to curl it over the edge and the clay hardens, this is where we run into problems where the piece gets stuck because we have to break this edge to get it up out of the bowl. I will say it's not entirely even. Um, so this side is dipped down a little bit more. So I might just try to get the two to act very similarly. a good time just to play. Just fool around. See what shape you end up liking and all of that. So I have a very, very drastic and deep form. Um, I've been turning them into bird feeders and bird baths outside, which is why I have a deeper form. So I'll show you how easy it is to grab this um, piece out of the bowl. It's something you're going to have to do, but just to keep in mind of how we're going to have to get it out in the studio, I'm just going to pull these up and it slides right out. So when you're pressing it into your platter or your bowl or whatever form, make sure that you get the sense that it can just be popped right out. That way we all know it'll definitely survive. Okay, so this is my finished form. We are at the point where you can paint. We're only painting the top, so don't worry about the bottom that's under here. That is just gonna end up a really nice glossy white color. If you'd like to decorate your leaf at all at this point before we get to painting, you can take some of your scrap clay and turn it into any little creature you'd like. I know artists who make little fish. Um, I think I'm gonna make a ladybug with you guys. You're more than welcome to design up whatever you'd like. So basically for a ladybug, I'm just going to roll a little ball and I'm going to flatten it just a little bit. They're pretty simple. 
So now that it's flatter on one side, I'm going to take any tool and we're going to slit through it. So this is going to make the two sides of the wings. I'm going to do the same thing up in the top corner to make a little head. I'm just going to poke some holes for the eyes. Just thinking about giving it spots later on. You can definitely poke holes on it to make it look like it has spots already. I think I just want to paint it. And I think I'm going to give him a little bit of a smile, just for fun. So he's got a little face. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but this is just something really, really simple that anyone can do. So if you feel like a fish is challenging or anything else you want to sculpt just feels like too much, you can definitely add a little ladybug. So to attach it, we are going to get some water. So I have water in my sponge right here. You can also get a spray bottle. We're going to do something called scratching and attaching or slip and scoring. So basically, you use a sharp tool and you make a tic-tac-toe type of pattern. So by the end, once we've added a bunch of water, it just looks kind of messy. We're going to decide where we want to put it. I'm going to put it towards the top. You want to get that part of it wet too on your leaf. And you're going to want to do the same scoring. So you can see right here is where I scored. I'm going to take our little friend. Ooh, slippery. We're going to sit him right on there. And you just want to kind of squish and turn him. And basically what you've done is you've created two kind of sets of teeth. And so when you squish them a little bit, wiggle them back and forth, they lock into each other. So here's the little guy. You want to take a tool, any kind of type of like soft smoothing tool. So this is a softer end. And you want to just walk that tool and smooth it around your attachment. So you want to get rid of any texture that you would have left from scoring. And that's just going to help create a really nice seal while also making it look really presentable and neat. There, so he's in there. He doesn't look like too much yet, but I think he'll be really, really cute once we paint him. So once you're finished, you are more than welcome to immediately start painting. If you have the time uh, and you'd like to take a break right now, would actually be really ideal. It'll give the clay a little bit of time to stiffen up. Um, even just 20 minutes, half an hour is helpful, but if you want to come back as late as an hour or two, um, that's totally fine. Basically, the harder the clay gets, the more firm your texture will be, so that when you're painting, you're not going to do any damage. Some of the biggest problems we have is if people paint really, really harshly, um, and their vein texture is really subtle. It can cause it to obscure some of the texture. So it is really helpful to let it firm up a little bit. So I'm going to give it maybe an hour, and I'm going to come back to it, and we're going to talk about painting. All right, so I think it's time to paint our leaves. We have a little partner here helping us pick out some good colors. <laughs> okay. I got a film. What are we going to do with you? What I recommend, we've given you a couple of paintbrushes. Um, you're welcome to use your own as well. We have a little friend over here, if you can't tell this tail swishing, so he's going to help us paint. <laughs> so I recommend using a, a thick brush, something that feels like it can hold a lot of paint. I have a fan brush. It's just nice and soft. The softer it is, the more it's able to, to hold more substance. So if it feels hard and firm, it's going to paint kind of scratchy. And I chose a larger brush so I can cover more surface. So I have all the paint containers here. I'm actually going to paint directly and mix directly onto my leaf, um, so I want to give it kind of an ombre. You're more than welcome to put your paint in another container and mix it. So I'm going to start off with yellow. I'm going to ombre it from yellow to blue. I think I'm going to start with yellow at the tip. So I recommend doing 
about one coat, maybe two. Depends on how much uh, material your brush holds. Basically, if it looks streaky while you're painting, it's going to end up firing streaky. So you just want to keep that in mind as you're finishing up. You can see there's some streaks. We're going to let it dry a little bit and <laughs> we're going to let it dry a little bit and see if the streaks don't dry away. And it'll start to set as you're painting, especially if you're taking your time. You will have to work around the creases in the paper. Again, we're only painting the top part of the sleeve. So as you're painting, you might realize that some of your texture is hard to see. That's okay. It's still going to be there. Um, the paint's just covering it up, but once it dries, it'll actually be right back on the surface. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you're losing it. Okay, so just to let you know how I'm ombreing it, um, I painted most of this yellow. Um, I'm just going to kind of fuse the blue into it. The blue is such a stronger color compared to yellow, so I'm just trying to be aware that it can be really overpowering. So we'll start with the blue up here. I did not clean my brush because I'm ombreing it. Um, it's not super important to be starting fresh, but if you are switching colors and you want things to be nice and clean and separate, you really definitely should be cleaning your brush. You're welcome to paint the edges here. I'm not going to simply because um, the newspaper is kind of obscuring some of them, so it just feels like it's going to be harder to do that. Um, but you're absolutely welcome to, just as long as you're not painting the bottom. And I'm going to paint the little ladybug last, um, simply because I'm getting some paint on him as we're going, and the black and red will kind of cover all of that up because they're such strong colors. Alright, so we're at the beginning of our ombre, I'm going back to yellow, and I'm just kind of starting to blend up and in. And just with blending, it takes a lot of patience. As you can see, this is definitely going to be a work in progress. But just have fun with it. Take your time. You will get a product that you're really happy with in the end. And even though I'm going over this a bunch of times, I'm doing it really lightly. And so that is the biggest key um, to making sure that you keep your texture. If you press hard with your paintbrush, you will start to lose some of the delicate veins. But I'm going to switch to another brush and start painting my ladybug. So you always want to paint black last. Um, because black is going to layer over any color. We're just going to delicately paint our little ladybug friend. I put a second coat on um, the ladybug and last but not least I'm going to do its spots. I have a really thin brush for that and we're just going to have fun with it. Okay, there we go. We have our leaf all made. At this point, you're going to want to reach out to us on the email that we provided. 
and we're going to schedule a contactless drop-off. I highly recommend doing it sooner rather than later. It's really helpful to transport this while your leaf is still wet or has a little bit of moisture in it. Um, it just It's sturdier when it has some moisture versus when it's bone dry, it's much more fragile, so it will handle the drive better and be able to be moved into the kiln easier. If it does come completely dry, that's absolutely fine. Thank you guys so much for making these with us, and we are super excited to see what you guys come up with.